Okay, entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy. So these are all some pretty important concepts um, when looking at the thermodynamics of the reaction. So we have a reaction coordinate diagram down here, which we'll talk about as well. Um, we have starting reactants over here. Um, this little hump, uh, well, both of these humps are considered the activation energy of the reaction without an enzyme and with an enzyme. Um, and then the products are over here. So we can see that the reactants are higher energy than the products. So this would have been, um, this, this reaction is releasing energy in the process. So enthalpy is defined by the following equation, H equals U plus P times V, where H is enthalpy, U is heat, P is pressure, and V is volume. Um, so enthalpy is usually expressed as a change in enthalpy from start to finish of a reaction. So it's usually delta H um, equals delta U plus PV. Um, but I don't really think you'll be seeing that specific enthalpy equation on the MCAT very much. They're not really, um, at least in my experience, they're not super concerned with you calculating enthalpy. It's more so using a given enthalpy to calculate the Gibbs free energy. Um, so when pressure is constant, again, as it will usually be on the MCAT, the change in heat is equal to the change in enthalpy. So if we're looking at a reaction and the pressure is constant, if we come right back up here to our equation, H equals U plus PV, if we substitute that P, um, it would be a delta P because we're talking about the change during a reaction. If that delta P is zero um, because the pressure remained constant, then this entire, um, this whole PV, this part right over here becomes zero and H just equals U. So um, in that case, for all intents and purposes, enthalpy is equal to heat. And many times uh, when you're given these values, um, pressure is held constant purposely uh, so that heat is equal to enthalpy. Um, it's a little bit easier for calculations. And just remember that when you're taking the MCAT, you're not going to have a calculator for it. Um, so uh, entropy is the disorder of a system. If you look up entropy, you'll find a bunch of really complex um, definitions and stuff that's really outside the scope of the MCAT. I mean, you're more than welcome to if that interests you and you want more background information about it. Um, but basically entropy is just the disorder of a system. So for the MCAT, your conceptual knowledge of entropy is a lot more important than memorizing it. So if we look right over here, um, if we look at this top, um, this top row right over here, we're looking at ice cubes in a glass is low entropy. When we increase the entropy, uh, we see that it changes a little bit. So we see that the state of matter, for example, will affect entropy. So going from a solid to a liquid, we're decreasing the order and we're increasing disorder. So whenever we increase disorder, we are um, increasing entropy. Um, and if you, you can look on a molecular level as well, low entropy would be very highly ordered, um, highly ordered sort of structure. Um, so say carbon structures, for example, they have very rigid formations. Uh, so those would be low entropy because they're very highly ordered. Um, and then if we look at something, say, like a gas, um, where the molecules are just sort of bouncing around freely, that would be uh, a very high entropy system because there's so much disorder. Okay, so those two, um, we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy next. So we can look at entropy and enthalpy individually to understand the system, but we're not going to get the full picture of it. Um, because when we see different reactions proceeding, um, we like to look to see if they're favorable. We say if they're spontaneous, then they're going to be favorable, which means if we leave it um, just out in the environment, leave the reaction to its own devices, it's going to proceed uh, to equilibrium. Um, and the way that we can calculate that quantitatively is by looking at this um, this value called Gibbs free energy. So it allows us to measure the total free energy change of the system by incorporating the change in entropy and enthalpy. And the equation that we use, which you should definitely memorize for the MCAT, is delta G equals delta H minus T times delta S, where uh, delta G is obviously Gibbs free energy, delta H is going to be enthalpy, and then that T uh, times delta S is the, is the ambient temperature times the change in entropy. Um, so entropy, change in entropy is usually given. Um, if, if they're asking you a quantitative question that involves you calculating actually Gibbs free energy, um, they're going to give you the entropy and they'll probably give you the enthalpy as well. Um, but most of the questions regarding Gibbs free energy on the MCAT are conceptual. So basically they're going to ask, um, they're going to show you something They'll, they'll ask you about a specific reaction, and then they're going to ask you if it is spontaneous or not. And the way you have to do that is look at this equation um, and just sort of plug in positive and negative values and see what comes out for Gibbs. So 
with Gibbs, we can also identify the spontaneity of the equation, um, but it might not always be obvious. So when delta G is positive, when it's greater than zero, the reaction is not spontaneous. Um, we call that an endergonic reaction. So it's, it's bringing in energy um, and it's not spontaneous. When delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. Um, and we refer to that as an exergonic reaction. Um, similar uh, terminology to exothermic and endothermic, but don't get them confused. Um, we can have an exergonic spontaneous reaction that is endothermic. Um, and we'll, we can sort of more conceptually understand that by looking at this table right below. So an increase in entropy and a decrease in enthalpy are the two driving forces of spontaneity. Um, so we'll look at the two sim simplest ones first. So if we look at this top row, we have uh, delta H, delta S, delta G, um, and then comments. So if we look at this top row and delta H is negative, that means it's an exothermic reaction. It's giving off heat. Um, so that is a favorable condition. Um, when we have something giving off heat, that is, that's what the reaction is tending towards. It wants to give off heat. It wants to get to a lower energy state. Um, we have entropy is positive. Um, <clears throat> that is also favorable. Um, that's just how the universe works. Uh, things, substances tend, tend spontaneously toward greater states of entropy. Um, so if we have something giving off heat, if it's exothermic and it's also increasing in entropy, um, we can even take those values uh, to verify and plug them into this formula over here. So if we have a negative delta H and we have a positive delta S, that delta H term is going to be negative. This term delta S is going to be positive. So if we're taking a negative and subtracting a positive, this delta G is always going to be negative, no matter what that value of T is. So that's why whenever we have negative delta H and positive S, this comment over here, it's always going to be spontaneous. Um, so we could look at that and then we'll go down to the bottom row over here where we have a positive delta H and a negative delta S. So the, at the exact inverse. Um, and it's the exact opposite. So it's not really favorable um, that a reaction is endothermic. Um, and it's definitely not, it's definitely not expected that the entropy would decrease. So if we have those two things happening, um, it's never going to be spontaneous. Um, and again, you could plug it into the formula over there. If we have a positive delta H um, and a negative delta S, we're subtracting a negative. This term is going to be negative. So we're subtracting a negative, we're adding. So we have two positive numbers uh, and that's going to be positive. Delta G is always going to be positive for that. It's the other two, uh, the other two conditions where it's, where, um, you have to pay a little bit closer attention uh, because they will ask you, the question that they may ask you is to identify the driving force of spontaneity. Um, so when we have, for example, delta H positive and delta S positive, uh, delta G can be either or depending on the temperature. So this delta H term, if we come back up to the formula, we're gonna see delta G equals delta H. This is some positive value. We can say delta H is some positive value. Um, and then this delta S is going to be positive as well. So we have a positive minus a positive. Now, the only thing that we are looking at after plugging those in is what is this T value? So if this T value is very low, it's gonna make this whole term low and it's gonna be very likely um, that delta G is positive. Um, if the T is really high, um, it's going to make this term much higher than delta H. We're going to subtract a huge number from a small number and delta G is going to be negative. So that's at high temperatures. So that's why when we look back down at this chart, we see it's spontaneous at high temperatures. Um, because once that T goes up, uh, we finally we finally have, uh, we're finally able to make that delta G negative. Um, when they're both negative, we have a negative delta H term and then this negative T delta S term as well. And it's uh, basically the same thing. So we're going to have negative and we're adding this positive term because we're subtracting a negative. Um, so it's spontaneous at low temperatures because the higher this T gets, the more likely this delta G is going to be positive because we're adding we're adding this positive term back to this negative delta H term. So the higher this term becomes, the more likely it is that delta G is going to be positive. Um, so that's why it's spontaneous at lower temperatures. Um, and in that case, if we have a negative delta H and the temperature is low enough, we can see that this delta G is going to be negative and that this is going to have a spontaneous reaction. So since delta H is negative um, and we're giving off heat, um, it is said that enthalpy is the driving force of spontaneity in that case, because um, entropy is sort of playing against it. Uh, if we want a spontaneous reaction, we would really prefer that the entropy is increasing. But since it's decreasing in this case, we need a driving factor. We need this driving force 
uh, to be so powerful that um, delta G is negative and that it becomes spontaneous. So in this case, um, if our enthalpy change is great enough, if we give off enough enthalpy, then that is enough of a driving force um, to create a spontaneous reaction. Okay, so the first question. A reaction is shown to have a negative value for delta H and a negative value for delta S. Which of the following statements is true? Um, so take about a minute, uh, pause, pause the video. Um, I will go over it in about five seconds. Okay, a reaction is shown to have a negative value for delta H and a negative value for delta S. Which of the following statements is true? And I put uh, the formula right there, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Um, so the reaction is spontaneous at low temperatures and the change in enthalpy is the driving force. Um, so that's basically what I was just talking about. Um, it's spontaneous at low temperatures because if we have um, this delta H term negative and this delta T, this delta S term negative, we are going to have a negative term over here adding to this term, this positive term. So we have to keep this T low enough uh, such that delta G does not become positive. So at lower temperatures, it's spontaneous. And because um, the entropy is increasing, really what's driving this reaction is enthalpy, um, is the release, that, exo, that exothermic release. Um, the reaction B, the reaction is spontaneous at high temperatures. Um, it's not because if that T gets too high, then delta G is going to be positive. Um, C, the reaction is spontaneous at high temperatures, and the change in enthalpy is the driving force. Well, the change in enthalpy is the driving force. Um, but again, well, that should say entropy, actually. So that would be incorrect both ways. Um, it's not spontaneous at high temperatures, and entropy is not the driving force. And D, the reaction is spontaneous at high temperatures, and the change in entropy is the driving force. Again, all of those are incorrect. The only correct one is A.